Good morning all. Um, I've built a couple of transformers. They're uh, on Vero board. I've put four pieces of wire sticking up out of the Vero board and I've simply sort of hung the transformer off those four pieces of wire. Now I've got um, two different types of toroid here. Uh, this yellow one and this grey one. Both of these came out of compact fluorescent uh, lamps. Uh, which are a good source of these very tiny toroids. Uh, you can see the size of these things from the Vero board holes, which are a tenth of an inch uh, between the holes. So that's about three tenths of an inch outside diameter for this toroid. Um, I've wound these with, oh, where is it? Tinned copper wire. This stuff here, 32 SWG. Now SWG is standard wire gauge. It's a peculiarly British thing. Uh, this is old tinned copper wire, which I've had for years. This came from Maplin, fairly obviously. And um, I wound these with 10 turns on the primary, 10 turns on the secondary. So really the primary and the secondary are identical. I thought I'd mm, wind the wire sort of from the top, plunging down and then rotating round. Uh, symmetrically on both sides. I'm not really sure what effect that has, if indeed it has any effect. Maybe it does. I can't remember my um, transformer basics uh, from electrical engineering. Um, but the, what I really wanted to do today was put these on the scope. Now I have already put them on the scope and um, quite interesting uh, results I got from these. One result is that uh, they both work pretty much identically, so I don't really need to show both operating. I think I'll use the yellow one because it's a bit more photogenic. But yeah, let's get um, the wave generator going into one side of this transformer and the scope monitoring what comes out of the other side. Right, so let's plug the uh, wave generator output um, with this cable. This cable actually came from the DSO138 oscilloscope. It's uh, jolly handy for the wave generator because it uh, ends in a couple of crop clips. So what I'll do is attach uh, those two crop clips to the input. Now I want it that way around because then uh, that looks better because the toroid is slightly tilted over and I want that facing me. So let's put positive up there. Let's put uh, negative there. I suppose I should uh, switch the scope on really. Right, okay, uh, now I need two probes because the scope won't automatically show the output of its wave generator, so I need to feed that into one of the channels. So let's put the yellow probe on channel one, green probe on channel two. And now to wire this up, um, I want, okay, let's put yellow, uh, which one is yellow, that one onto the wave generator output. Now I did something really stupid yesterday. <laughs> I um, heated with a soldering iron that piece of wire or a piece of wire on a slightly different version of this with the scope probe on it. And as you can see, it kind of melted a slot into the end of the scope probe, um, this thing, this probe thing, which is really irritating, but there it is. So let's put negative onto the uh, negative side of the input winding. Uh, the other scope probe is the green one that's going to go onto the uh, output winding and I'll put um, the ground onto the other side of that winding. So that's my setup. Uh, wave generator goes into the primary of the transformer. We're calling the left side the primary. Uh, we'll look at that on yellow. On green we'll have the secondary of the transformer and all the grounds are connected. Good, let's go. Right, so here's the uh, setup. Let's move that back a bit so that we can see it. Uh, transformer there. Now I've set the wave generator, let's switch that on, um, to its default settings. I'll get a bit closer in on the screen in a moment so we can read um, what all these settings are, but the default settings are sine wave, one kilohertz um, frequency output with an amplitude of 500 millivolts. Well, I'm going to wind the amplitude up um, to, let's go up to two volts. Oh, that's four volts. So two volts and of course one kilohertz 
is going to be way too low a frequency for this tiny 10 turn um, transformer so let's take that up to something much higher and you can see um, that as I raise the frequency I also raise the amplitude that's uh, 2 kilohertz that's 17 kilohertz that's 30 kilohertz so let's take it up to 50 kilohertz because that gives us a reasonable amplitude um, it's two volts peak to peak this is on one volt per division so we are getting two volts oh actually you know that's on half a volt per division so we're only getting one volt peak to peak out let's take the frequency up further yeah if i take that up further you can see that we are now getting the two volts out so of course the inductor at low frequencies at 50 kilohertz is um, causing an attenuation of the signal coming out of the uh, wave generator. Okay, so you've seen the transformer, let's get in on the scope screen. Right, so we've seen that at 50 kilohertz, um, we're not getting the full two volt amplitude. So let's take that frequency up to um, around 100 kilohertz. There's 100 kilohertz. We're still not getting quite the full amplitude. Um, we, get, we don't get that until ooh, about 250 kilohertz there. Now we're getting the full amplitude. Of course, I'm going to just um, increase the time base on the scope to match uh, approximately the frequency of what I'm putting in. So we're now getting two volts peak to peak. Uh, that's 500 uh, millivolts per division. You can see that up on the top left there um, out of the secondary. Now you might think, uh, where's the other scope trace? Well, it is there. That's the input on yellow and that's the output on green. And um, well, they're both identical. So this transformer, it's, it's not loaded on the output, of course, other than with the, uh, with the oscilloscope, but it's providing an absolutely excellent one-to-one uh, -one, um, transfer of, I don't know, voltage, I suppose, from the uh, input to the output side. Um, I can raise up the, uh, the green one, which is the output. I can raise up the yellow one, which is the input. And yeah, they um, match absolutely identically. Let's get them sitting right on top of each other. Um, so what can I do to take this, well, what looks like a near-perfect transformer um, out of its comfort zone? Well, we saw that at low frequencies. So let's go back to the wave generator and take the frequency down to something really low, like um, 5 kilohertz. Of course, I'm going to have to bring the uh, frequency of this thing way back. Take the gain of the input and output up. Let's take it up a bit more. And you can see there that the sine wave, well, isn't very sinusoidal. It's a little bit lopsided. It also got these very strange artifacts, but I've got a feeling those are scope related. They're nothing to do with the uh, transformer. Uh, they might even be wave gen related. They're, they're, they're scope um, artifacts. But yes, we've got a slightly lopsided uh, sine wave there because we're not really driving that inductor fast enough to keep the, in, the sort of input side, the inductor side, in its uh, continuous area. We're, we're pretty discontinuous there. Let's take the frequency way down. Let's go down to say one kilohertz. Uh, of course, we've got very little amplitude there. So we're gonna have to put a lot more gain on these two channels. <laughs> oh, that's not working very well, is it? No, that's working very badly. Right, yes, there are some very strange artifacts if you take the frequency way down um probably to do with the wave generator wave generator i think but anyway let's get um into a, a range where we can actually trigger on this thing so yeah sort of two three four kilohertz we're having problems with uh the wave shape the sine wave actually uh getting into that inductor we've got massive attenuation here because if i uh turn this up you can see that we've got a uh, huge much higher amplitude when i get up into uh tens of kilohertz and hundreds of kilohertz i'm having to turn these way down um so that's one area where it uh deviates from the sine wave now what happens if we actually deviate from the sine wave um deliberately if we go to say a square wave well we get that sort of thing let's turn the amplitude of the outputs down a bit now we're having problems triggering let's hit that oh that's because i'm actually right on that center line if i go up a bit or down a bit I can trigger that a bit more successfully so of course a square wave won't go through an inductor that's uh, or a transformer that's pretty obvious or will it um, let's increase the frequency so that um, 
we get away from this discontinuous operation mode. Let's increase the time base. And um, keep going, 500 kilohertz. And it's actually looking a bit squarer at one megahertz. I mean, that's not a million miles away from a square wave. Yes, that's one megahertz. But uh, yeah, I never knew you could put um, something approaching a square wave through a transformer. And uh, even with this highly distorted signal going through the uh, transformer, the correlation between input and output is still extremely good. I mean, you can't see much deviation between the yellow, which is the input, and uh, the green, which is the output. They're pretty much sat bang on top of each other. Uh, right, just for fun, let's go to a ramp waveform. So that's a triangle wave. Uh, let's take the frequency. Uh, the maximum frequency for triangle waves on this wave generator is 200 kilohertz. Um, so yes, as you expect, uh, a triangle wave doesn't get through the transformer. It's more, more really that it doesn't um, get into the inductor linearly. The inductor is causing it um, to have a sort of exponential rise and an exponential fall. But even so, yet again, the uh, input and the output waveforms are absolutely the same. They're completely on top of each other. Right, let's put the waveform back to sinusoidal and start taking the frequency up. So we've got 200 kilohertz. Let's take it up to uh, one megahertz, which is about there. Let's widen the uh, up, up the time base on the scope. Right, let's keep going. Um, in sine mode, this can go up to quite uh, astonishingly high frequencies. So let's take it up to five megahertz, uh, which is there. And now we can start to see a little bit of um, deviation from the output, which is green, away from the input, which is yellow. Uh, let's take it up to 10 megahertz, which is there. And uh, yeah, we're now starting to see a significant phase shift. Uh, I think my trigger's a bit off there. Yeah, that's better. Uh, let's give it a bit more amplitude. Uh, we've also got um, an amplitude shift. You can see these are both on the same setting. So we've actually got what appears to be a bit of gain on the uh, output side of the transformer. The green trace is a higher amplitude than the uh, yellow trace. They're also uh, definitely out of phase. Let's keep going um, on the frequency. And of course, as we start to get to these much higher frequencies, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 megs, um, the transformer is now attenuating the signal quite dramatically. That's 20 megahertz. We can also see that there is a significant uh, phase shift between input and output at that frequency. Right, let's go back to something that's more uh, within the sort of useful range of this transformer. I've set this to 300 kilohertz uh, sine wave. We've got the amplitude of the wave generator, two volts peak to peak. I'm at one uh, volt per division. And you can see that we've got an amplitude on the primary side of two volts and an amplitude on the secondary side of two volts. Let's change the amplitude of the uh, wave generator. So we'll take that up to uh, four volts. Let's take it up to five volts, up to six volts. And you can see that there's no significant um, deviation between output and input. I suppose that's expected. So it doesn't seem to really matter how much uh, energy I put into the transformer in terms of uh, voltage, it uh, gets through pretty much unchanged. Uh, so that was fun. I mean, I've never really sort of looked at a transformer before and pumped a series of different wave shapes, amplitudes and uh, frequencies into one before. So that was quite fun. Um, certainly this transformer won't work at very low frequencies. It's not surprising this um, primary winding. Well, the two windings probably have very low inductances. There are only 10 turns there um, at very, very high frequencies we start getting a phase shift. Now that's probably not due to the inductance on its own. It's probably more to do with um, inductance and capacitance. You can see that um, the input and the output are on these strips and they do run in parallel uh, to each other with a strip in the middle. I didn't, I thought I won't put two strips right next to each other because that kind of makes a deliberate capacitor, but I took a, a strip two away, but even so there is a capacitor there where it's two capacitors in series, I suppose. So yes, at the very high frequencies between 10 and 20 megahertz, that is starting, I think, to have an effect. But I'm really impressed at the uh, 
the one-to-one -one transfer ratio, it is absolute. I mean, you know, I've got 10 turns on either side. They're absolutely wound symmetrically. So I suppose I shouldn't expect anything less. Um, so yeah, there are my two um, little transformers. Now this one I didn't show on the scope and that's because I have um, tried this one on the scope and the performance is identical to all intents and purposes. I couldn't actually see any difference between uh, this little transformer and this one here. Um, yes, they behave absolutely the same, but um, yeah, quite interesting just to put um, a transformer on the scope, pump a variety of different uh, things into the input and see what comes out of the output. I thought that was quite fun. Cheerio.